or welcome back to my channel if you are new here thank you so much for tuning in my name is Jess today I am going to be doing a little bit of a catch-up q and A. I I feel like I do these like every so often just to keep you up to date with what's going on in my life and keep you up to date with like just anything and everything whatever you want to know so I did on my Instagram story pop a question box up with um, just a little let's catch up and you guys have been posting your questions in so I thought I'd answer as many as I possibly can without making this video ridiculously long <laughs> so we have got all sorts on here from Christmas plans to solo holiday questions to skincare to everything so Without further ado, let's just crack on straight into the video. So the very first question I'm gonna be answering is, well, let's make it a festive one. So it is, what do you normally do for Christmas? So if you missed my Vlogmas last year, I am pretty much doing the same thing. Basically what I do for Christmas is I move home. I don't usually move for very long. Sometimes I've moved for a couple of weeks. Sometimes I've moved for just a few days, but me and my sister both collectively move home into my parents' house and we spend Christmas with the family. So on, I think maybe it's the day before Christmas Eve, I am gonna be moving home. I'm undecided at the minute as to whether Billy's coming with me. Um, I think this year is gonna be a short stay, maybe he's uh, the 23rd to maybe he's the 27th. I do, the thing with Billy is that I love bringing him home, I really do. And also my sister has a cat as well called Max who is also a Bengal breed so they are, they do end up getting along but it, in terms of moving Billy into a new environment and introducing pets, although he's met Max before a few times, it's almost as if they've forgotten each other by the next year. So it can be quite stressful for him. So I'm really undecided as to what to do this year because I getting him even into the carrier to get him home is an absolute nightmare. So undecided on that point. If he doesn't come home, I will be coming home every every day to come and visit him and play with him and feed him, etc. But it does feel bad leaving him. So I'm, like I say, I, I'm undecided as to what is happening with Billy at the minute, but otherwise I will be moving home for Christmas. Usually we tend to have other family members come over on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day, and then sometimes we go elsewhere for Boxing Day, like my aunties or um, or sometimes they come to us. It changes every single year, but yeah, that is the general plans. If you do have cats as well, please let me know in the comments if you do a similar thing to me at Christmas, what happens and what do you do? Just because it is something that's been playing on my mind over the last couple of months as to whether to take him home or not, whether it is worth that stress on him or whether it would be better to leave him, leave him here and come come and see him every day. Luckily my parents don't live too far away from me so it wouldn't be too much trouble to come back to him but yeah let me know if you're in the same situation as me and what you do. The next question, let's keep it festive, will you do lots of Christmas content? So I am planning on doing vlogmas this year, let me tell you this gives me so much anxiety because it which seems very strange because I started my channel by daily vlogging, I used to vlog every single day for I want to say nearly a year I did vlog every single day and upload and like that was the routine that I was getting into but in terms of vlogmas the fact that I'm now reduced down to three videos a week the thought of filming every day gives me so much stress I am planning on doing it as much as I can let me know what kind of content you'd like to see I do have a little bit of a plan of what I would like to do videos from like decorating the house putting the Christmas tree up um, lots of festive ideas but let me know if there's anything specific you would like to see in the month of December and I will get right on it. Okay next question. Okay so this one <laughs> this one is referring to my last solo trip so this one just says hope you haven't got any bruises from your fall. I do in fact have bruises. I have a rather large one on my elbow there and um, if you are unaware and you haven't seen my Paris vlog go and check it out. It was um, amazing. I spent 24 hours in Paris and um, I fell off one of the electric scooters and I've landed myself this bruise, which luckily isn't too sore. The actual fall itself wasn't um, wasn't anything catastrophic. It was just like, a, it was wet. I put the brakes on too hard and my scooter slid and I fell off it. Um, I do have a little bit of a bruise on my leg as well, but like I said in the video, my tights didn't even 
like ladder or anything which I was very very shocked at but um yeah I literally left Paris with a bang because that happened that was the last thing I did before I left so <laughs> memories memories from Paris we'll call it uh, but yeah so in terms of staying on the theme of Paris um uh, people ask me how was Paris Paris was absolutely amazing the thought of doing um, just a really small city break was something that I'd always wanted to do even before I did my first solo holiday to Ibiza um, but I knew it was something that I wanted to do over kind of the autumn and winter months um, as I feel like the summer is very much like a beachy style holiday for me I, I much pref like prefer doing those in the summer and then doing like city breaks in the winter I, don't get me wrong I don't usually go away this often but something about going away on my own I seem to have caught the travel bug like majorly so yeah <laughs> but yes Paris was absolutely amazing um I definitely want to go back and I want to book in to see the Mona Lisa I know a few people said that she's really small and whatever but it's just one of them things that I like I would like to say that I've seen next question let's stay on the travel theme is travel plans for next year so I don't have anything planned at the minute for next year however I do want to continue to go away both solo and with friends or potentially with family and I don't know yet is the answer I do have something planned for this year as of next year not at the moment I feel like I do need some home time I do need to spend some time with Billy Billy is obviously well looked after when I go away my street is full of cat owners who all collectively come and look after Billy whilst I'm away so he's very much so looked after possibly even more so whilst I'm away than I am at home so he's definitely well loved within my street so um yeah I need to kind of stay at home for a little bit um and spend some time with Billy and also I'm not made of money so <laughs> as much as I love going away I need to make sure that I can afford it and still pay the bills again we'll stay on the we'll, we'll keep this like a travel section but the next question is how did you find it going on a solo city break compared to a beach type holiday so for me like I said before I love going on beach holidays during the summer and the winter is when I want to spend time in the cities so for me I absolutely love both but there are completely different vibes so in the summer when I was going on beachy holidays it was very relaxing yes I was going out and exploring and things but I had a lot of time to kind of just sit and chill and relax and just zone out um, whereas city breaks I they're very like chaotic they're, well they're not chaotic I think that's probably the wrong word to describe it but there is a lot to see and especially when I give myself 24 hours there's not a lot of time to see it in so I'm constantly up and out of the hotel and exploring around so I find the beachy holidays more relaxing and more chilled but the city breaks are very they're also amazing in the sense of you get to see a completely different lifestyle um the architecture in Paris was absolutely amazing um all the buildings I just couldn't stop staring at it the, the amount of amazing looking buildings in Paris was just like wow <laughs> and comparing it to Newcastle yeah I'd like to live in Paris but I don't think that's an option for me <laughs> the next question okay so moving across to more kind of fashion and style so who is your style in sport struggling to dress my body so for me it's hard to answer this one because I feel like everybody's so different and different styles suit different people regardless of what size you are or what body shape you are um, however there are certain styles that obviously flatter different areas differently in terms of my style in sport it is anybody and everybody who I follow on social media who I see in the street my friends my family whatever it is if I see something that I like I'll like I have been known to go up to complete strangers and say I love the outfit where's it from um, and then in terms of social media um, I will I do follow a lot of fashion accounts both different body shapes and similar body shapes to me and I just kind of see if I can replicate the outfits in terms of like so for example an all black outfit is always going to be flattering I, I think personally on no matter what your body shape is but um in terms of keeping up with trends I think I'm turning a little bit of a corner at the minute in in the fact that I'm less trying to keep up with trends and more trying to create a little bit of a capsule wardrobe so I'm trying to build that capsule wardrobe I did ask on one of my previous vlogs whether that's something you'd like to see and a lot of you said that you would so it's it's going to be a longer process so I'm thinking maybe it's in the new year once I've had a chance to kind of build my wardrobe and I'll kind of show you what I've got in it basically a capsule wardrobe is 
something that you have around 30 pieces and then collectively those 30 pieces they all go with each other so like say a pair of jeans and then this top that I've got on is like just like a plain stripy top but this top will go with jeans it will go with leggings it will go with smart trousers it will go with a skirt it will go with something else but then another top that I've got will also go with every piece of bottom as well so it's about create it's about creating several different outfits with a minimal amount of clothing so not minimal amount of clothing like a minimal number of clothing items in your wardrobe so that is the kind of wardrobe that I'm trying to create at the minute and I'll let you know when I'm close to finishing that and I will definitely be filming a video letting you know what is in my capsule wardrobe and how I style each piece so looking forward to that and um, but yeah in terms of um style and sport it is anybody and everybody around me so have a look if you're struggling on social media try and find accounts that represent your body type and um go from there I guess it's it's not an easy process to just kind of know what's going to suit you yeah but I would definitely recommend kind of going for some basics and building it up from there okay so this question do you never feel scared living in living on your own I hate being on my own in the house how do you do it so for me personally I have lived on my own for about four and a half nearly five years I have lived in shared accommodation I've lived with friends I've lived with my sister I've lived in my family home obviously and for me personally living on my own is when I am at my happiest I feel like I don't know why I think that just for me personally having having my own space where I don't kind of have to compensate for other people it just it just makes me I don't know it just makes me feel more at home and I can do whatever I want with the house in terms of like in terms of feeling scared I don't really I don't really experience that I think the only time I've ever felt particularly scared was is sometimes when for example I've got like a knock at the door late at night um but I'm not really too bad with that because at the minute I because now I have quite a lot of security on my house I have you know a video recording doorbell and I have security cameras so I know that I'm safe that I'm, and I can check those cameras before I open the door or you know I can and it it all records so if anything were to ever go wrong or anything were to ever happen I would always have a, a video record of it so I guess for me that's kind of gives me a bit of peace of mind so in terms of if you are feeling scared then maybe putting a little bit of extra security in your home might help ease that if it's just a case of you just, you just don't like being on your own then I mean not everybody can do this but I have Billy, I have my cat. Um, Billy provides much entertainment for me and we keep each other company. So in terms of having a non-human lodger, <laughs> um, having a cat for me is perfect because they are very independent. They're not dependent on me being home all the time. It's sometimes I feel like Billy prefers when I'm out the house, but <laughs> who knows? Um, so yeah, I'm sorry that you're feeling scared about being on your own in the house, but um, putting measures in place to make yourself feel a little bit more safe might be the way to go for that. Next question, uh, what's your current series binge? So you guys, if you've been following for a while, you will know that I am obsessed with just binging series, that I love a really long series that I can really get stuck into. Um, most series that I do binge watch, I end up kind of not, not really paying attention to. So I like series that I can stick on in the background whilst I'm doing my washing, whilst I'm cooking, whilst I'm tidying the house or whatever. At the moment I'm watching Suits. Um, Suits I am watching now for the fourth time. <laughs> But it is nine seasons long and like I say I can just stick it on the background because I don't really need to pay too much attention to it and yeah so I love Suits, I love Grey's Anatomy, I love um, oh, what was it Desperate Housewives is amazing I absolutely love that um, just something that's quite light-hearted and easy to watch and also kind of watching the Jeffrey Dahmer series which I'm, I'm struggling with I'm not gonna lie I made the mistake of watching the first episode whilst I was having my tea would not recommend that um, based on what the story is about but I didn't quite realize that um, I have watched a few episodes of it but I'm kind of dipping in and out because I can't like I do love a good like murder documentary or like whatever but it is it's quite chilling to watch I think is is the right word for that but yeah that is my current binge series is um suits and then occasionally a bit of Jeffrey Dahmer okay so going actually going back to the travel thing so somebody's asked what uh, how can you afford to go away so much so I appreciate 100% that the amount of times that I've gone away this year is slightly unrealistic for everybody not everybody can just 
book a holiday a week before they go and just head off but I am in a, a very privileged position in terms of the fact that I am self-employed I do work from home and taking my camera away with me is kind of classed as work so because I'm vlogging it and uploading it onto YouTube obviously all the background stuff that goes on it is classed as a almost like a work trip even though it is an absolutely amazing thing that I'm doing in terms of the price of things um I did tell you what how much Paris cost and I think my first Ibiza holiday was also really realistically priced so um if you haven't seen those videos I think the flights for Ibiza was a was a £40 return and because of the time that I booked it I booked it like a week before the season started all the hotels were really cheap and I got a nice long weekend for not really that much and then in terms of Paris for the flight and transfer returns was £50 so the flight was £25 the transfer was £25 um, returns I think the most expensive part of that holiday was the hotel but in terms of spending, I do do a little bit of research before I go. I tend to, I didn't really do it as much with Paris, but for Ibiza specifically and with Tenerife, I do tend to go online and have a look at local restaurants, see their menu, look at the prices, and see where I think I'm gonna, where I'm gonna go. And I do try to keep things as cheap as possible. So in terms of, the way I see it is that Paris, for me, for that 24 hours, was a lot cheaper than just going to London. Um, so staying in my own country and going to London would have been a heck of a lot more expensive bearing in mind that the the trains alone I think were about a hundred pounds and I think that was one way as well I can't remember but yeah I think for me it's about finding the right um, the right flight the right time to go and just doing a little bit of research and you can really bring like scale down the price of things um if you put a little bit of research into it so once again i understand i'm in a totally privileged position in terms of the fact that i can just get up and go when i want but yeah that's that's basically how i do it okay next question how are you i like this question i must say whenever i put one of these question boxes off it makes me feel really really happy that people ask me how I am because I think it's just a really really nice thing like a nice gesture and I really appreciate the question so at the moment I'm doing really really well I feel like my mental health is is doing really well at the minute um don't get me wrong I'm kind of getting a bit of the autumn winter slump I think um during the summer is when I'm usually at my happiest I feel like at the minute with my anxiety I'm just I'm okay but I'm not nearly as bad as I was previously so I am thankful for that at the moment I don't want to diagnose myself with SADS but I do feel like I, I'm definitely a lot happier in the summer <laughs> um but don't get me wrong I am very happy but I think that is down to having my PT sessions and doing regular exercise um and just being kind of content with where I am at the minute I feel like before when I was still like building my channel I I had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life and I feel like I was constantly trying to achieve something that I was being unrealistic about but I feel like I'm, I'm doing well at the minute like I say I'm content with where I am in terms of you know the way that I'm living my life the um my weight loss and well with my weight loss of course I would love to lose weight um and I am working towards that I'm just struggling a little bit with my food choices sometimes you know I do these weekly what I eat in a day videos which um, do keep me on track in terms of that day um but in terms of the rest of the week I think I I mean I mentioned in a previous video that I eat well or I eat healthily maybe three days three to four days a week and then I just I don't know I fall off for the rest of the week um but that doesn't mean that I'm not trying I am trying to get back on track in terms of um, my food and things which I know will always benefit towards my mental health but yeah in general I am doing well thank you so much for asking and then the last question which I think I'm going to answer is my current skincare routine and they've put my that my skin looks amazing thank you so much i literally have never been happier with my skin at the moment than i am now i feel like i mean i don't have like makeup on today but well, i do i've got so i've got a little bit of concealer under my eyes i've got some uh mascara on and my eyebrows done but in terms of like my general skin and my forehead like i don't have anything on at the minute and i do feel confident enough to come on camera like that so yeah I feel like it's going really well my current skincare routine to keep it like this 
um i have been trying so so hard to keep it consistent and try and doing it twice a day sometimes that doesn't happen just because i i'm so tired at the end of the day that i'll just fall asleep and not do my skincare but i do do it at least once a day so in terms of cleansing i use um the cerave smoothing smoothing cleanser alongside my lumi spa so my lumi spa i've had for oh, three years now probably one of the best devices that i've invested in it is not a cheap don't get me wrong um you i think you can pay for do like a payment plan where you pay in three um through paypal i'm not sure if they do Klarna yet but it basically whatever your cleanser is doing it enhances that because it it works by like really putting it into your skin it opens and closes your pores etc and i think that has been a, a game changer in terms of my skincare and like i say it is an investment they're not cheap but in terms of the long term benefits of it and in the long term when you're not using face wipes and like having to consistently renew other things the price kind of covers itself eventually but it does take a while um so i've been using that for my cleanser and then for my toner i actually just use the one from aldi it's like a rose a rose glow toner i will be putting pictures up just so that you know what it looks like um but a rose glow toner and what i actually do with that is the little travel sized spray pots i actually put it in that let me show you hang on because i've got it here i've still got it in my little um travel travel thing but i put it in a little pot like that just so that i can spray it onto my face rather than use cotton pads um i haven't bought any cotton pads for god knows how long because this would be what i the only thing i would use it for and i just put it in a spray bottle and i just spritz it over my face and i find that that works really well in terms of my my serum so at the minute I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury magic serum um, absolutely love that my skin feels amazing after I use that I do try and have, um, I do kind of tend to switch up my serum so I use that one and then I've also used the body shop Edelweiss um, serum what else have I used the Avon power renewal serum is it called the power renewal might be lying there unsure but it's the, it's the avon it's like seven in one it's got loads of different benefits to it i really really like that one as well if you're looking for a cheaper alternative and then in terms of moisturizer i'm currently using the charlotte tilbury magic cream again that that cream is just oh my, when i put it on i just know that it's doing really nice things to my skin so and um, that is something else that i invest in and then on morning routine i do use an spf i just use the one from the body shop it's a factor 50 and um i use that for spf on a morning so that is my skincare routine i only really started building my skincare routine like this year like i always knew that skincare was important to kind of reduce the signs of aging and to keep my skin healthy but before the start of this year i think it was actually one of my new year's resolutions to like build a skincare routine before this year i didn't really do anything i literally used face wipes and a bit of moisturizer maybe and it wasn't even a proper moisturizer i think it was like a nivea moisturizer or something it was really bad but yeah i feel like now since i've got a consistent routine my skin has never looked better and i coincidentally when i don't use my lumi spa that is when i start to get spots so i used to get quite bad acne like around here um, more kind of hormonal side i think that was a lot to do with the contraception that i was on i switched up my contraception and then I started getting acne and whatever but the, the Lumi Spa really really did save us in terms of that um, but yeah that is my skincare routine and that I think covers most of the general questions that you guys had I hope that you did enjoy this little catch up I feel like we've got um, a lot covered there so yeah let me know if you have any further questions in the comments and I might do another one of these in maybe December just another little catch up and yeah i hope that you've enjoyed this video if you have then please give it a thumbs up go hit the subscribe button and if you want to be notified for when i upload next then hit the bell as well thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye guys